TV licensing. Whether you love the idea or hate the idea. And whether you love the BBC or you hate the BBC, more than 70% of its funding comes from TV licensing. And following a petition submitted to the government, the issue was debated on the 1st of March of this year, 2021. The government has committed that the licence fee in its current form is going to be around until at least 2027, but the government has committed to looking at the funding scheme in advance of the next charter. So since many of you have asked me to do a video on the subject, I thought I would explain some of the rules. But make sure you stick around to the end where I explain why a certain myth came about and stuck around for many years. And first of all, if you're new to me and my channel, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get notified of new videos. And for more behind the scenes and questions, Head over to Black Belt Secrets, linked in the description, where I will answer your questions you leave in the comments. So as I said, it's reported that more than 70% of the BBC's funding comes from TV licences. But that doesn't mean it's just BBC TV that this is funding. Of course it funds television, but it also funds radio, the BBC World Service, BBC Online and lots of other things. As you know I like to do on this channel, I like to give you a very nutshell version and then explain it in a little bit more detail. The outline of the legislation for TV licences is in the Communications Act 2003. Section 363 of the Act makes it an offence to install or use a television receiver to watch or record any television programme as it is being broadcast without a licence. Section 365 of the Act deal with fees that are payable, also linked in the description below. And since 1991, it's been the BBC's role as the licensing authority to collect those fees, although it does subcontract out the collection of those fees. But this video is going to be part one, where I deal broadly with when you need a TV license. So make sure you subscribe for part two, where I deal with collection of fees and what happens when you don't pay. So as a very broad rule of thumb, if you are watching live TV or recording live TV or using BBC iPlayer, then you will almost certainly need a TV license, although there are some exceptions, of course. And the rule about BBC iPlayer came in in September 2016 because that was a bit of a loophole, because it wasn't actually live TV. But of course, the BBC wanted to incorporate BBC iPlayer as part of its service in the TV licensing scheme. But whilst we're on that point, just because it applies to BBC iPlayer as a catch-up service, it doesn't mean that it applies to all of the other catch-up services. For example, ITV Hub, all four, My5, these are catch-up services. Each of these services are legal to use without a license, so long as you're not using them to watch or record live TV. Now, just picking up on the wording, which is often misunderstood or misconstrued, live TV does not necessarily mean that there is physically a person standing in the street broadcasting something and they are physically there at the time that it is being broadcast. Live TV simply means it is being broadcast and you are watching it as it is being broadcast. In other words, it may be a pre-recorded show which is being broadcast on TV and you are watching it as it is being broadcast. That's the distinction. And this would amount to live TV, even if the TV company had pre-recorded the show. Just in the same way as if there were literally a live reporter broadcasting live from a given location for the news, for example, each of those scenarios are live TV. The difference, therefore, with catch-up TV is that it is a service providing access to the content, but it is not being broadcast and those signals received live. That's the main difference. And the other thing to bear in mind is that it doesn't matter what device that you watch or record live TV on. Whether that's your laptop, whether it's a TiVo or Sky Plus device, or even an old-fashioned VHS recorder, if anyone still has one of those. In each of these scenarios, you will still be considered to be watching or recording live TV, and you will still need a license. But like many things, the reverse is also true, again with a caveat. So as long as you are not watching or recording live TV, and you are only using any of your devices for catch-up services, excluding BBC iPlayer, then you will not need a TV license. So how about watching TV outside of your primary residence? Does your TV license cover you in that scenario? Well, the broad rule of thumb is if it is a mobile device and powered by its own internal batteries and you have a TV license for your main home, then your main home TV license is going to cover you for those mobile devices. If, however, you have a second home and a caravan where you've got a permanent TV in that location, 
you're likely to need a second license. This indeed was one of the things that caught many students out when they went into student halls of residence. By installing a TV in their own room, it was considered to be a separate requirement, even separate to that in a communal area of the student residence. Whereas if you are outside of your main residence or you are a student in halls and you only use a mobile device powered by its own batteries, then you'll be covered by your main TV license at home. Another misunderstanding is that if you pay for Sky or Virgin TV services that somehow this covers your TV license. It doesn't. TV license is a separate thing altogether and if you are using Sky and Virgin Media then you are almost certainly at some point going to be watching or recording live broadcasts and you're going to need a TV license in that scenario. The same is true and can be said for pay-per-view shows as well. This is not a catch-up service, it is not an on-demand service. If you are watching it at the same time as other people, in other words, it is being broadcast to you and the general public and you are each picking up on that broadcast, watching it or recording it, you are going to need a TV license for this also. And as is the case with a second or holiday home, if you are renting a property, be that a room in a shared property or you're renting the whole of the property, and you are watching or recording live TV or using BBC iPlayer, then you are going to need a TV license for that also. Another misunderstanding is that if you are watching foreign TV channels that are broadcast into the UK, but not from the UK, then you don't need a license. As I said, this is a misunderstanding because it is still live TV for the purposes of the legislation. And again, you're going to need a TV license to watch or record those foreign broadcasted TV shows. Another misunderstanding, a good one this time, is that some people think that to listen to the radio, you need a TV license. Now this hasn't been the case since 1971, prior to which you needed a radio license but if you are simply listening to the radio, this is not considered to be a TV receiver for the purposes of the act. Therefore, if you are only listening to live radio, but you don't watch or record live TV and you don't use BBC iPlayer, then you don't need a TV license. So how does the TV license apply to all of the online services, such as YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, Now TV, and so on? Well, the rules are exactly the same, but the distinction is in what is being broadcast, and again, whether it is watched or recorded live. Taking YouTube as the example, if you watch my live streams here on a Sunday, you will not need a TV license because I am not a TV program, I am not a TV company. This is user-generated content, so you can watch it live or you can watch it later and you won't need a TV license. On the other hand, if you watch Sky News or any of the other TV companies that are broadcasting live and you watch it or record it live, even on YouTube, then you will need a TV license because this is broadcasted TV for the purposes of the act. So the rule of thumb for online services such as YouTube is to ask yourself, is it user-generated content, such as me and my channel here with you watching it live or later on, or is it a TV company and therefore it is a TV broadcast and it's being shown to everyone at the same time? And just to clear up a distinction of wording as well, streaming doesn't mean live. Streaming just means that you are receiving the content through your internet service provider instead of through a TV signal. This doesn't mean it's live. Although live TV shows by TV companies will be streamed to your device, but they are live. The distinction is in the fact that it is a live program by a TV company that is being shown to everybody at the same time. Therefore, the same can be said with Netflix, Amazon, and all of the other services. So long as it is a catch-up service and it is streamed to you on demand, uh, rather than being live and shown to everybody or pay-per-view shown to everybody at the same time, then you won't need a TV license. And finally, the myth that I promised to explain to you was that people believed that if you own a TV, then you need a TV license, regardless of whether you watch the TV or not. As I said, this is a myth, but it comes about because of a misunderstanding of the wording of the legislation. So taking a look at that wording again, section 363 of the Communications Act 2003 says, a television receiver must not be installed or used unless authorized by a license. But as with most legislation, this must also be read in conjunction with any other legislation that provides definitions and explanations. In this case, it's the Communications Regulations 2004 as they stand currently amended, in which Regulation 9 further defines what a television receiver is, and it states as follows. Any apparatus installed or used for the purpose of receiving 
any television program service, whether or not it is installed or used for any other purpose. So on a very quick reading of that, or without much analysis, it may very well sound like you need a TV license if you install a TV that's capable of receiving TV signals, regardless of whether you install it for any other purpose. But that's not quite what it says. Taking some of those words very carefully and very precisely, it says any apparatus installed for the purpose of receiving any television program, whether or not it is installed or used for another purpose. In other words, if you are installing a TV but not for the purpose of receiving a television program service, i.e. you only intend to use YouTube, catch-up services, games or DVDs, then you don't need a TV license. But that is where the myth came from. So simply put, taken in isolation, the installation of a TV in and of itself will only require a TV license if it is installed for the purpose of receiving television programs, regardless of whether it's installed to receive anything else. And as a final few tips, don't forget that students may be eligible for some part of a refund if you go home for the summer. People over 75 that receive pension credits are eligible for free TV licenses, and there are more details of that on the TV licensing website. So I hope you found that overview useful. Make sure you subscribe for part two and check out Black Belt Secrets where I will be answering your questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.